Hello, everybody. Um, all right, so at Booking, we started uh, experimenting with uh, containers in late uh, 2015. And uh, we had a prototype by early 2016. Uh, it was an exploratory effort. Uh, it proved uh, it served its purpose. It proved that uh, the containers technology has uh, has potential. So we decided to invest in a fully fledged container platform. Uh, we looked at what was available on the market at that time, and we decided to go with OpenShift, mainly because uh, back then they were ahead of vanilla Kubernetes with the enterprise features that they were offering, and we wanted. So uh, we built a platform with that. We launched it. Things were fine. But uh, after a while, we noticed that our users were more and more unhappy. They were unhappy because they were encountering issues uh, that they couldn't troubleshoot, because the tools that we built for them, that we instructed to use, they were abstracting away uh, relevant issues from the platform. They were also annoyed by the fact that they were now becoming more and more proficient with Kubernetes, and they saw cool features that they wanted to use, but we were lacking either the tools or the integrations for, for those features. Um, between the increasing number of uh, support requests, uh, the um, work on new integrations and tools and so on, the difficulty in troubleshooting some of the instability of the platform, uh, we were in a pretty bad situation. Uh, we looked at um, what we could do, and we decided that we need to build a more stable and more robust platform. So we decided to start from scratch, and then we build a platform and integrate the users when, when the time comes. The first step we took in that direction was to talk to the leadership team. Uh, the, the key takeaway there is to, that we had a, a good project plan. Um, it, was, uh, it had short cycles. Uh, it wasn't front-loaded. And once we started working on it, we were providing regular and verbose updates. This gave the leadership team the confidence that we were on top of things, that the image that they had about the progress of the, of the project was the real thing. Now, before we could gain the trust of our users, which is the topic of this, of this talk, we had to also regain our trust in our own platform. Uh, with the V2, with the OpenShift uh, version, we chose to do some things differently than we were doing in the rest of the infrastructure. We were running the control plane, for example, inside the cluster. We decided to move away from those things. We decided to go back to the way we knew how to do things. So now we're running the control plane on bare metal with system D. Um, we decided to also tackle the feature set. The key aspect there was that we wanted to reduce the number of moving parts. Uh, now we are no longer running a uh, proxy on the nodes, and we have directly addressable pods, so kind of like win-win. The, the fourth thing here is that we spent a lot of time on observability. Now we have uh, dashboards that, at a glance, give us a clear view of um, sorry. <coughs> if they're uh, of the problem that we are experiencing. Either it's an integration or a component of the cluster that is, uh, that is having issues. So <clears throat> once we had these things covered up, uh, we were in a much better situation. We, we were confident that our platform is stable, is robust, so now we can go after the users again. Um, in, in order to regain their, their, uh, their, their trust, the, 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 the main approach there was to, to set a clear contract, just set clear expectations. Uh, we started by defining uh, SLOs for, uh, for the platform, and we made a distinct effort to make them relevant SLOs. So we still have the SLOs about uh, API latency and error rate and so on, but we also have SLOs for the things that the users care about, like, for example, pod startup lat latency, or how uh, or the fact that they can do rollouts and rollbacks and you know, how long does it take? Um, problems still do come up in our, uh, in our platform, but uh, now we're in a much better situation. Now we know about those problems before the user notice them. We can send them alerts. We can, uh, we can publish RFOs. Actually, we do publish RFOs for all the, all the problems that we're experiencing. And uh, we are, uh, you know, this gives them trust that um, although things are, best things are still happening, uh, we are working on fixing them, and they can track the progress of, of, uh, of those fixes. And last but not least, uh, we asked our users to learn Kubernetes. This is a shift from what the approach that we took before. Now we give them trainings, we give them extensive documentations, and this makes them feel empowered that if the problem comes up, then they are the first line of defense in, in bringing their application back online. Um, that's it in a quick uh, wrap up. If you want to talk more, you can find me on Twitter. You can uh, check our uh, blog, it has really cool posts. And of course, you can join us because we're also hiring. Thank you.